The Miami Dolphins situation is an absolute mess that I don't think even Marty Huggins could have cleaned up after seeing that, A, you tried to tank without the support of the head coach, and B, you got caught tampering with Tom Brady. And now owner Steve Ross just got fined $1.5 million, has to stay away until October, and you just lost a very coveted first-round pick in 2023 and a third-round pick in 2024. So it's not all sunshine and friendship in Miami right now. But to me, the most egregious of the two by far is tanking, and it's not even close. Tampering is a misdemeanor at best in my eyes. And while I understand tanking in theory somewhat, I don't understand how a coaching staff that spends so much time away from their friends and family and players who have sacrificed so much to make it to the NFL could be put in that position by leadership. But I do want to tip my cap to Brian Flores for saying no when he was asked to tank. Now, there's a great way to help alleviate this problem, just like the NBA did, one of the few things they've got right. You set up a lottery system for the NFL draft. Because to me, it's one thing to trade away players for picks or to play young guys to help develop them for the long run, but it is a totally different thing to ask a coaching staff to try and intentionally lose games. Now, that's just not in my DNA, and I don't know any coaches who could operate like that. The NFL has to do something to keep teams from tanking, and manipulating the draft is the only way. Now, like I said, I believe that tanking is much worse, and tampering happens across all sports, and it isn't as severe, it just is what it is. Now, I also don't understand why anyone would expect there to be a harsh punishment handed down to the owners from the guy who works for them in Roger Goodell. I don't know any other business where the manager gets to punish the CEO. The owners know this and they love this. So the NFL does have multiple problems. Now, as a competitor, the tanking thing obviously just hits me different because I'm a, it goes against the whole reason you're playing and that is to win. And some people will say that Sometimes in order to win games, you must lose them. But that's a cop-out in my opinion. To quote Coach Herm Edwards, you play to win the game. I'm going to bring in my co-host, former Michigan quarterback, six foot seven Redwood David Cohn, and Alex Trebek uh, to my right. <laughs> uh, I'll start with you, David. You know, you had a very yeah. interesting take on this when, when we were kind of bouncing around earlier uh, before we came on. Looking at... at you know, what it kind of means for Tua, like tampering versus tanking. Just your thoughts on the whole situation. All right, so let's break this down here. First of all, the timing is interesting, given that two days ago we were asking why Robert Kraft wasn't penalized as an owner for some of the situation that, that he got in. So now an NFL owner is fine. But let's break this down and differentiate between the tampering and the tanking. Now, the NFL has said that th these fines here with the first and the third round pick and the $1.5 million and the suspension of Stephen Ross is all because of tampering, mm. trying to get Tom Brady and trying to get Sean Payton. It has nothing to do with tanking, okay? So let's start with tampering. I mean, Stephen Ross is a Michigan man. Every single study hall that I ever went to at the University of Michigan for four years took place in the Ross building, okay? He loves Michigan guys. He drafted Chad Henney and Jake Long back-to-back -back rounds when I was there. He wants those guys uh, with the Dolphins, and Tom Brady's the greatest quarterback ever, a Michigan quarterback, those guys are going to hang out. Those guys are going to talk. I don't know the details. They're probably on each other's yachts. Maybe the conversation comes up, would you ever come play for me? I don't know, and I don't really have a problem with it. And as it relates to Sean Payton's agent, when why can you not talk to an agent whenever you want? Like, what is Sean's yeah. hopes and dreams? What does he want from the future? Would he ever be the coach of the Dolphins? I don't know. To me, this has much more to do with tanking, but the NFL doesn't want to say it because it is more of an egregious crime. Now, you brought up Brian Flores. If Stephen Ross asked Brian Flores to, to, if he incentivized him to lose football games, that is wrong, okay? That is wrong, and we said it at the time. The problem was Brian Flores came out and said, the owner of the Dolphins wants me to lose games, which is wrong, and it's because I'm black, and it's because the NFL is racist. The second part of the sentence didn't need to be there. I mean, could the same situation happen to a white coach? Coach, yes, and if it did, is it still problematic? Yes, both things are true. I really deep down think this has more to do with tanking. I like your idea to solve it. And there is a difference between tanking and rebuilding. Yes. We see rebuilding all the time. The Astros did it, now they're having success. The Braves did it, now they're having success. But there's a difference. And also, Bill Belichick, Bill Belichick has proven you can pick last every year and still be the best ever. For sure. I'm, I'm with you 100%. I think this has way more to do with tanking. There's an interesting meeting going on here soon where apparently yes. a hammer is going to get dropped because it's one thing for the NFL or an, uh, the NBA or somebody to come out and say, hey, there was tampering, you know, which looks bad. It's another thing to come out and say, we have organizations that are intentionally 
losing games. That's a much higher priority in my opinion. That's the integrity of the game. We talk about Betton and Calvin Ridley and stuff like that. We'll talk about the integrity of the game. That's integrity of the game. Like you're going against the whole mission. And again, like I said, in theory, I, I can wrap my mind around it, but in practice and in execution, I, it, it doesn't add up to me. I, I don't know how you would go about it, but Blaine, you know, mm. to me, yeah. tampering happens in every sport. Tampering happens in college football. Now look at the transfer portal. You got Eli, I'm not saying Alabama tampered, but you got Eli Ricks going from LSU to Bama. You got Jermaine Burton going from Georgia to Bama. You can go anywhere you want now. You don't think that they find ways to talk to coaches that aren't on the school registered phone for that coach, that tampering goes on. It happens, it's always going to happen, and most people are not gonna get caught. The Dolphins were stupid about it, let's yeah, be honest. They, they were, were stupid about it. they were. Um, the thing about this, if this was the Dolphins getting hit for tanking, if y'all think that, and y'all only got hit with this, congratulations. Because mm -hmm. compared to what you should have got hit of, hit with, because if you were tanking, incentivized Brian Flores, you should have almost got your team taken away from you, hmm. realistically, if you think about it. But if this is the punishment for that, and they just use the tampering as an excuse, congratulations, you just got let off easy. But to the tampering, all right, I agree with you when it comes with Sean Payton and his agent. That's just crap to me. I feel like you should be able to call an agent and find out. It's the whole point of their job. Yeah, exactly. But with Tom, I, I still think there needs to be somewhat of rules to where you can't try to get a guy to come play quarterback for your team while he's a quarterback for another team. There, 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 there are rules. Levels there, there are rules. I'm not saying there shouldn't be a rule. That's why I said it's a misdemeanor in my eyes. Yeah. It's a, you know, jaywalking or it's, you know, something small, like you mm -hmm. took a left down a one way and got caught by, like, it just, <coughs> to me, there are rules set in place, but we also have to live in the real world. Tampering goes on. It's always going to go on, and there's been so much tampering that we've never heard about, because sometimes it happens in person. Guys may go get drinks together. Nobody's recording anybody. But again, if we are going to measure, and I want the Booster Club, uh, again, I, I know you guys got questions, but I want your thoughts and comments on this. I just don't understand anybody who would think tampering is worse than tanking. And Cone, I am so with you on this, dude. I think you are spot on. I think that Losing a first-round pick's a big deal. Yes. Okay? We, we can say, and, and Blaine, I, I would agree with you on the tanking part that they got off light if that's really what it's about, which we both think that it is. But losing a first-round pick's big. Losing a third-round pick's big because that's great trade bait, especially yep. if you want to move up. And look what the Dolphins just get to, did to get Tyreek Hill. But the biggest winner in this whole thing, as crazy as it sounds, and it may look bad a little bit with the second time when they were talking with Tom Brady when Tua was there, is Tua Tagovailoa. Because if the Dolphins had two first round, uh, you know, had those two first round picks, if they were able to go and say, you know what, not only can we go get B. John Robinson at number 11, but let's go get a quarterback if Tua gets hurt. Tua gets hurt game four, game five this year and can't play a lot. They, they would have maybe gone and got a quarterback, David. Okay, I like that. And you brought up a good point when it came to the Deshaun Watson ruling, saying that if he did what he was accused of, he should have been suspended more games. If he didn't do, he should be suspended for no games. That's the exactly right. Games is kind of weird. Okay, so if the NFL is being true here that this th these fines and this suspension is due only to tampering, then do you think that that was too much, Blaine? And because you're on record as saying if it's if this is really about tanking, then the penalty wasn't harsh enough, which I can get behind that. I don't, th you know, I just feel like this pun the the crime and the punishment fit. Uh, I think losing a first round for tampering for tampering. We're tampering. talking about tampering. I was like, if this has anything to do with tanking, this punishment has anything to do with tanking. The Dolphins, this is a win. Okay, this is a win. But for tampering, losing a first round is never fun. First round pick, it's never fun. The one point five million dollars. Who cares? The guy's a millionaire. He's gone for six weeks. Oh, no, you have to sit in your mansion and watch football games for six weeks. God, I feel so bad for you. <laughs> the first round, the third round, someone hurts. But the first round does hurt. And if you really have a guy you really wanted, you could bundle something together, together and get back in there. If you really wanted to, if you knew your guy, you could get back in there. I feel like it fits, but I almost, I almost think if I were to lean aside, it'd be a little bit too much. It'd be a little bit too much because I don't agree with the agent thing. Okay. I don't. I, I feel yeah. like that. To me, that's crap. That's another Wait, example of tampering. Can with you Sean make Payton the point that. on the show that you made earlier, just to differentiate rebuilding and tanking in terms of rebuilding being yeah. upper management and tanking yeah. involving coaches and players? Yeah. And and we're gonna bring Brandon Marcello in a minute. Booster Club, get ready to ask him some questions. Here's the difference to me. Okay. It is one thing, and I actually want to ask Brandon about this. It's one thing to say we are going to trade away some of our best assets because we know we're out of it, to be able to accumulate picks or young players. 
I've got no problem with saying, you know what, we're gonna get rid of these guys and develop some of the young guys we have. Are there gonna be growing pains? Yeah. Are there gonna be struggles? That's part of it because we are trying to build something here. It is a totally different thing to go to a coach and say, I want you to lose games on purpose. Exactly. That is that is one of the biggest no-nos. That's worse than, way worse than gambling on your own team, which Calvin really got suspended a year. I will continue to die on that hill till the end of the day, Mel Gibson Braveheart style, paint my face, let's get after it. But again, those are two totally different things. All right, hey, if you like what you heard, go ahead and ring that bell. Turn those notifications on. We're bringing it every day daily from 2 to 3 Central, and we want you here. I can hear it ringing now.